Aye. Thank you. That's really nice. Um, I think I'm, can everyone see that? Could we like close some of the blinds? I'm sorry if you need like light and stuff, but it kind of kills me. It, when, when light shines on me, baby Jesus cries. Thank you. That's okay. I think we need everyone just, just to make sure that you guys can see this right. And girls, I'm sorry. I always say guys. I apologize. It's wrong. Um, can you see this properly? Can anyone, everyone see this? All right, great. I got an okay from there. Can I get guy with hat? Great. Thank you. Nice hat. All right. So uh, do you guys want to start? Do, girls, I'm sorry. Do you, do you want to start? <laughs> I'm, I usually, well, in Hebrew, we have, um, when we talk, we actually need to use words that indicate female or male. And I always write the male version with a slash in female. People get really mad at it because I can have, like, entire paragraphs with, where I just put it as gender not specific everywhere. In English, this is, like, not my first language. So oftentimes I just say guys without noticing, and I seriously apologize. Um, Y'all, all right, I'm going to try that, but people are going to correct me. That's not the way you say it. <laughs> all right. Uh, so y'all want to start, or do you want to wait a few minutes for other people? I'm going to run, run this uh, kind of fast. So we have, I think, let's start in two minutes. Is that okay with everyone? All right. Um, does anyone have any questions before I start? Or do we, specific requests um, of any kind? I don't know. Maybe you have some. Like, no? Okay. Okay. Uh, how, let's uh, just show of hands if you feel comfortable. How many of you write modules using, like, how many of you write objects, object-oriented? All right. All right. This is good. Okay. Um, how many of you have used Moose? All right. We're good. That's good. Then you are the people I want to talk to. This is good. You're in the right place. Um, I'm not going get, to get very advanced, so I'm sorry, uh, because I do want this to be a completely 101 talk where everyone could just, after you see this, you just go and you just write something. So um, I do apologize to anyone who knows what this is about and knows how it's done and won't, won't get that much out of it. Maybe it'll be fun, let's hope. Um, okay, well, I think, I think we can start. Uh, I'm going to run this pretty fast, so if I move along too fast, you're going to have to stop me, because otherwise I won't. I have no indication whether I'm going fast or not, except my time. So um, you're going to have to help me out in case I go too fast, because I, I really tend to do that. Uh, also, if you can't hear me, because I probably won't be standing here, I really hate just standing all the time. I have to move around, and if, that's, um, if you can't hear me, just you have to let me know so I get back to the podium, okay? We got a deal? Yeah. All right, good. OK, um, so this is the Moose Talk. I'm so here, and let's start. Um, I, I should probably say a few things about myself, because not a lot of people here know me. Some people here do, do know me, and that's kind of scary, because I haven't met them before. Um, I'm so I'm, my name is not Sawyer X. That's like two names, all right? That's a first name, last name. You don't have to refer to me as Sawyer X. You can just say Sawyer. Um, I have a blog at Blogs Pearl. I used to have one used Pearl. I have a, I'm a CPAN author, so I'm on Search CPAN and Meta CPAN. I have a GitHub page. Everyone here refers to me as the dancer guy. You can, you can do that. That's cool. Uh, I work on a lot of projects, um, most notably Dancer. I'm the current maintainer. Uh, module Starter, which I actually picked up from Andy, who did an amazing job, uh, along with uh, Ricardo and a few others. I wrote Meta CPAN API, and there's a really, really cool role called Moose X Role Loggable, and I wrote that one. I think you should use it, and if you don't know why, just ask me afterwards, or if I have time, I'll do that. I don't always go to YAPC, <laughs> but when I do, I talk about Moose. Now, I was looking at the attendees list, and um, I noticed someone who's actually not here because he screwed me over. Um, when I saw him on the attendees list, I was like, I have to, I have to add a slide. I don't always talk about Moose, but when I do, Stephen Little is present, who wrote Moose. Unfortunately, Stephen Little is not present, and I will file a complaint. <laughs> All right, so what is Moose, basically? It's an object system. It provides objects. That's about it. It's meta class based, 
which is a fairly advanced, sophisticated um, feature. And that basically means that if you have objects, you have definitions for those objects as a layer under it, and you can change that layer and change the way objects actually work, which is really advanced. We're not going to get to that, but it's possible. Moose itself is very advanced. It has a lot of really good features. Basically, it cherry picks from all the best languages, PHP not included, and um, it has a lot of really good features. It's also very sophisticated, which is different, where it is really smart in the way that it does things, and it's really uh, community infused in the way that it learns from the community what the community uses, what it does, and then adjust, uh, adju adjusts itself to provide easier ways for the community to do what it actually does in terms of convention. It's also very extensible, meaning that you can extend pretty much <coughs> most parts of it. You can write um, a lot of plugins for it. It lets you play with the objects, the meta, the traits. It's really cool. And it, most of all, it's production ready. Most was written a while ago. It's been used on fairly insane number of uh, systems, production based, uh, whether it's web applications, financials, everything. It's production ready, it's good, it's really good. You should use it. So why Moose really? You don't have to read this, you shouldn't really be able to. On the left side, you can see a um, regular application for uh, a regular um, object implementation for file. On the, on the right, you see Moose. So is that okay? Do you get it? Suppose you don't, I'll just continue on, okay? Uh, if you do, you can, you can just leave if you want, but that's, let's say continue. Uh, how do you write objects in basic profile? You start with a reference, and it's usually to a hash because, well, you can do to an array or something like that, but it's not very useful. And you connect the package to it using bless, which basically hooks them up together and says, if you do something to this reference, you actually go and look for that in that namespace in the package. And it provides, then you write subroutines that provide the attributes. So you have like a sub name, it gets the values, it looks into the hash key, and it puts it in there and checks, whatever. And you have to error, get the, error check the hell out of it. I curse a lot, I'm sorry. Um, I don't really notice it. Um, so you, you really have to check um, the hell out of it. You, like, did it give me the right parameters? Should this be, uh, uh, is this valid? Should this be uh, required? Is this not required? It's really annoying. And I'll give you an example, package dog. Um, we use strict use warnings. It's on one line for uh, clarity because I want it to be big enough. Sub new, my class, right? When you write dog arrow new, you actually run dog new and send it the word dog as the first um, parameter. You do a bless uh, on an on a anonymous uh, hash and um, that returns the same hash but bless and I can just return that to the user and that, there we go, that's it. Is that cool with everyone? So some issues. First of all, you have to define a new every single time. That means that if you create a new object, you copy that new that you have. And you, along with time, you stack up some ways of doing this new method with error checking and all of that stuff. And you have to copy it all the time to the new location. Uh, my example doesn't even have parameters yet. If I want to give the name to a dog, I can't do that. It doesn't have default values yet. If I want to give the dog an age, which is zero because it was just born or initialized, um, I can't do that. Uh, we still have to check everything manually, which is really, really, really annoying. Maybe the age was like, hello, which doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, so how do you do with Moose? We start with a package dog. So far, so good. Use Moose, and we're done. That's pretty much it. So what we get? First of all, strict and warnings on by default. And this is what being community fused really means. Strict in warnings is something we use all the time. Beginner programmers forget it, and experienced programmers are sick of writing it. We should all be using it. And um, it does that. You get a new method automatically. And, well, the hell with ponies. We, we get a moose, so who cares about ponies, right? I actually found a few pictures of moose playing soccer. I'm not kidding. It's available, but I, I couldn't use them because of rights. All right, so let's look at um, some full affordance successors, attributes. I use the has key uh, keyword that I get when I use moose. I suddenly have a command called has. And that command gives me the possibility to define new attributes. 
So if I use has, I can give it whatever the name of the attribute is. Here, I'm going to call the attribute name. And then I'm going to set up what kind of accessor is it. Is it a read-write one? Is it a read-only one? Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I can't do that. But I can tell you what it says. There's has name, fat comma, round brackets, is read write. Okay. That's what it says. And that means that I want to read write attribute. That means that now if I have a new, I can actually say name, sky, or whatever you want to call your dog. And, um, and uh, in the process of using the object, I can actually run name again and give it a new value because it's a read write attribute. I can still write to it new values if I want to. So I'm able to use RO as read only. If I want attributes that I can initialize but cannot change afterwards. Usually this is what you want. You want read only attributes. If you're not sure, ask me if we have time for questions and I'll explain why. You can manually change the setter and getter via, uh, via writer or reader. The option is writer or reader instead of like you have is and then you add writer set name. And suddenly you have a method that Moose creates called set name. And you can use set name to set a new name instead of the attribute name. Or you can use reader to have get name. And then to get the name, you don't call name, you call get name. It creates the uh, method for you. Attributes can have defaults, attributes can have type constraints, they can have traits, they can be lazy, have builders, clear, predicates. There's a lot of things that attributes can do. I'm going to go over some of those. Then I'm hopefully, if we'll have the time, show a good example of it. All right. So c type constraints. I'm going to uh, knock it up on that. Uh, is a str is a option provides a type constraint, and these type constraints are uh, contained inside Moose. They configured it. They have a bunch of those, and they check for them. There's string, int, boolean, error ref, hash ref, code ref, regex. It actually checks for regex. And classes, you can set up. Uh, uh, you can say is a um, animal. Animal. Thank you. And suddenly it will check that it's a class. It's an object that is a class animal. It's really useful. You can combine them, array ref, pipe, that's a pipe that means or, so it's an array ref or hash ref, or it's an array ref of strings, and you can do an array, uh, an array ref, a hash ref, and yeah. A little bit, yeah, go ahead. How about if we, all right, um, well, let's give it a try. What's this? Can you all see that? All right, good. I'm going to read it anyway. All right, uh, there's derivatives. An int, for example, is a num. It's basically a version of a num. You can have uh, a hierarchy there of something that's based on something else. You can create your own. There's a subtype command available on Moose Util type constraints, and you can use that, the subtype command, to, to create your own command, like create your own enum that has a, a, a few uh, specific possibilities. All right, methods. Methods are the same as you wrote them beforehand. You have a sub run, you write whatever you want, you have self, and you close that one. Okay? We're good? Inheritance, really easy. Package func, use moose, and I use the word extends. Extends al also comes when I use moose. I have has, I have extend, there are a few more. And the extends basically creates the inheritance connection that I have with person, where it says, Punk is a derivative of person. It's inherited. It inherits from person. That means the same as like using the isa and all of that stuff they use. Shoot. Multiple inheritance. Yes, it is allowed. <laughs> nice one. All right. Multiple inheritance is possible. Extends gets an array. You can use it accepts an array. So if I have a packet child, use moose, then I can do extends father and mother. And I can do that as many as I want. You probably don't want multiple <laughs> inheritance. What you do want is this role. Roles works as a composition instead of a tree of, in, of uh, inheritance. I'm not going to go into what the difference is um, because better people, smarter people, are able to explain it much more simply and, and, and uh, understandable than I do. But if you don't understand it or you really want to know, come and ask me, and I hope I don't really confuse you. All right, so I can use the width. And width, what, what it basically does, what roles do is take a set of behavior and apply it to a class. That means that tattoos, piercings, squatter, whatever, these are behaviors. These, these are not classes. You cannot do tattoos new. So you might want to write an object of tattoos. You could do it like a new tattoo. But 
theoretically, here, tattoos is just behavior. It can have, it can have attributes on its own, it can have methods, but that's it. There is no new method for a role. It's just behavior that uh, a class consumes, and then you get that stuff, which is better than curtain. Of course, roles, uh, this is the main line. Roles are things you do instead of things you are. And that's a major difference between inheritance and getting more behavior for that class. Yes? Can it be both or do you have? You can, you can do both. So you can't have a single name for both class and role? Well, no, it's a single namespace, but well, that's a namespace collision. This is not what Moose can do. This is what, like, pro, like, the, your file system can do. You, you can't have two names, with two files with the exact same path that are different. The, right. the file system will not allow that. So, so if you name a role, yes, you can if they have different files. <laughs> but yes, you can. You can. So are you writing a role or just writing a subroutine? Subroutines. Maybe you define more attributes. Maybe tattoos has an attribute called num of tattoos. That's fine. Yeah. So you don't wanna any any other question before we're at it? Oh, shoot. Is, is it like an interface? Not yes. Yes. So they're, they're both we're trying to be short in time. Both are PM files. Uh, Sorry? Both are PM file and a Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, tattoos is a PM file, like punk is a PM file, like uh, person is a PM file, whatever. Alright. Uh, hooks. Hooks. These are also called method modifiers. Suppose I have a package user, winner aware, which is based off of uh, regular user. Now I want this user to know about the winner, be ready for it. So I can do before leaving. Leaving would be a subroutine defined in user, and I can use the before method, which is uh, the before keyword, which is also provided by Moose, to wrap up a subroutine that will run right before leaving will be run. This way I don't have to override user's leaving method. Right? So I can do a subroutine, uh, um, an anonymous subroutine here, and I can do a check for the cold attributes and then run the take jacket method. And then whenever someone uses when or where, and they will call the user the, the base the base class's leaving method, I'm going to make sure that it does that. It's really cool. I can do the same with a different one. Suppose I have a user secure, extends user, then I have around, which is really cool. Around wraps the entire subroutine, then I can control whether it's going to be run anyway at all. So I can call a subroutine. I get my original method over there, so I can call it if I want to, <laughs> and then I get self, and then I run the security check. If the security check boolean returns true, I can call the original method with whatever parameters I got. If not, the original method, which is called login, will not get run. That's really cool. You can do a lot of really cool stuff with round. There's before, after, around, inner, augment. I'm not going to get into inner and augment. They're kind of insane, uh, rarely used. More attributes stuff. Um, I suppose I have an attribute set. Oh, sorry. Uh, I got is, is a default, required, lazy, predicate, clear, or builder. I'm going to go over them. Don't worry. Let's start. Um, default. <coughs> Pretty basic, right? String, number. This is how you put a hash ref, array ref. Uh, I can, like, have a whole subroutine there that creates a new object for it and that gives a value that is an object. That's cool. That's cool. And if you need a more elaborate subroutine, you should probably use builder. That is also an option. I'm going to show it, don't worry. Uh, <coughs> attribute option required. Required. This means that it's required. This means that if you run new without it, it will actually fail and say, this attribute needs a value on initialize. You have to provide a value. And this is not required, which is kind of obvious, right? All right. Uh, lazy. That's how you make it lazy. What lazy means is that the class will not create the slot for this attribute unless it absolutely has to, and that is defined by whether it is accessed at all. That means if you have an attribute whose value is a subroutine that actually connects somewhere, and someone runs the application without using that attribute, it will not do it if it's lazy. It would only do it when someone accesses it. This is really, really, really useful. Uh, for example, if you have a database handler and someone runs your command line application and they don't use, they don't need the database, that will not get used. And if you have a, uh, um, an application that uses a database handler, but it uses it like 20 minutes after it starts, you don't want it to connect at the beginning of the application. You want it, you, you're afraid to have a stale handle. You want it to connect whenever it is actually used 20 minutes later. So a lazy attribute will do that. That's really cool. No access, no penalty. Uh, so lazy is good. 
You should use lazy for almost everything that is calculated. It's really good for cash um, attributes. Yeah, shoot. It's useful in the uh, variable running. Because if you need to read it, well, you need to get a value. Call this just undef? It's not undef, it just does not have a value at all. Undef is a value to Moose. It's not a positive, it's not a true value, but it's a value. There's, there is a difference, and you will see it. All right. Builder. Bu builder is the name of the subroutine. You just give it a name of a subroutine that you will create in order to build this. So it will, cr it will run build it. And then you can use whatever. And inside the subroutine, you can actually use the object already, even though it might be as part of creating the object, which is really, really, really cool. So this is really awesome. And obviously, after you build it, they will come. It works here. This is awesome. All right. Uh, it just really didn't work. I was like so sad about it. I had a, a Kevin Costner movie poster thing there. People like, I don't get it. All right. Um, clear. A clear is the name of a subroutine that Moose will create for you in order to clear it. So, for example, if I, ha if I have a subroutine called Time Machine, I only have self, and I can now call clear it because Moose created it. And what we'll do, it will clear the value of the it attribute. And it will not clear it to undef. It will not clear it to zero or empty. It will, it will have no value at all, which is so much more different than a value of undef. So Moose differentiates between not having a value, having a value that is false or undefined in a way, like zero, undef, or empty string, and having a true value. It sees the difference between those, and it's really important. Why? Um, so that clears the value. It doesn't clear it to default also, because we have predicate. And predicate is the matching uh, idea to clear where you have, you give it a name of a subroutine, Moose will create that subroutine, and then you can use that in order to check if it has a value. Even if it's an undefined value, uh, undef, even if it's a false value like zero, it is a value. And you can check that using a predicate. So it has it, if so, do it. All right? Any question about this? No one, you. The, the if check is, uses the, the predicate. And the predicate can tell you if it's a value even if it's undef. The, the has it is with, even if it is, the value of it is zero or undef, that's still gonna be a true value. Yeah, if it's undef, predicate, if like the user gave name undef, the predicate is gonna say, he gave it a value. It might not be false, sucks for you, but it's a value. It will actually print out sucks for you. Sorry, I'm just kidding. What? It's, it's close, but not yet. So, so predicate is excluding the value that has it, it's evaluated. Whatever it is, it has a value. Even if it's a false value, there is a value there. There is something that was put there. It's kind of equivalent to exists. Right, exactly. Thank you. Go. Awesome. You guys are great. Okay. Uh, so it checks whether an attribute value exists, even if it's a false value, which is good. All right, Comicam, this is an example. We, we actually have time for this example. Uh, so I wrote like a small uh, tool called Comicam just to give you an example of how things are done. I actually watered it down a bit because I wrote it like way too much and, and basically I was supposed to give like the theoretical talk and I figured maybe I'll give a practical talk, but maybe I'll just get both. So, all right, uh, Comicam. It's like the, it's a hub for various comic strips. We're gonna write this. I'm gonna show you how it's written. Um, it allows you to fetch different comic strips from like whatever source you want, um, and it has a standard, uniform interface to to add more comics. So if you have a new comic strip that you want, you can add it to Comic Can. Comic Can doesn't really exist, but you could. Up, I could give you a go. You can upload it to CPAN and start working on it. Um, and what we'll be using here for the examples are roles, lazy attributes and overriding attribute options. I'm gonna show a few ways of how I do things with Moose, which I think is right. And if you have a problem with it, like, fuck you guys, seriously. <laughs> um, if anyone knows me, it's like, I, I'm pretty flexible, but I think things should be done right. So if you write, like, bad and, and up, give me code, I'm gonna tell you what's wrong with it. Sorry. All right, I'm not gonna curse, but I'm just gonna tell you, like, this is wrong. All right, and um, we're gonna use also attribute uh, predicates. So how Comic Can, uh, how it looks, like what the structure. We have a user, and this is, I guess this is a skin. Um, we have the main module is Comic Can PM. The user is gonna use simply Comic Can PM, PM in order to get the comics, all right? So far, so good. We're gonna have comic modules, 
which uh, go to specific, um, specific, specific comics like XKCD, Penny Arcade, Dilbert, whatever. And the main module is going to use those. OK, so far, so good. Make sense? Also, we're going to create an interface for all of these modules so they stay uniform. And we're going to put it into a role. We're going to call the role comic can role comic. And then these will use that role in order to have a uniform interface, maybe some default attributes, maybe a default subroutine that they all want to share. We're going to put it in here, and then they're going to use it, and they don't have to rewrite everything. It's going to be very refactored. All right. Um, so let's look at it again. P uh, comic Con PM is going to be the user's interface. It's going to be a hub for whatever Comic Con comic modules it has. Um, these are going to be objects that actually fetch the comic strips. Okay, that each one of them will have a logic of how to get that comic strip, and they're going to have a common interface, and it will be defined by the Comic Con role comic. Okay, it's going to be a role that's going to be the interface for all of them. So, all right, code. Um, let's see. All right, is that okay? Yeah. All right, so I created here like a tree of basic CPAN stuff, build, change log, there's an example here, library, and you can see there's Comic Can PM over here, and there's Comic Can uh, directory with comics, different comics for everything, and a role here for these comics to use as an interface. There's a bunch of other files here. I'm not gonna open them, most of them don't really work. All right. If I'm going to lib, there's comic can here. And you can see here in the, oh, sh snap. All right. Um, I'm trying my best not to curse. It's really hard. Um, no, this, no, I'm not assuming this works. Is that, no, that's worse. Wait. Um, <coughs> holy shit. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. Which I don't think actually changes the... Uh... Let's try default. All right, is that good? Awesome. All right, so there's a package here, right? Abstract, use moose, I don't need strict warnings. I use namespace auto clean, which is a basic module that keeps your environment clean. That's always really important, my mom always said. Um, so you have, uh, I use the different comics here so I can access them. And I have a, a comic here, uh, an attribute, that will hold whatever comic the user wants. So it could actually run, um, if I show you the example of how it's actually used, this is how it's actually used. I use Comic Can, and then I create a new Comic Can, and I give it a comic, like, I want you to give me XKCD. And then I can use Fetch on it. All right? That's a good usage? Okay. So. I have a, a comic here, and you can see I set it to read only, so you cannot change it afterwards. And there's a, a string here. It's, um, I make sure it's a string and that it's required. That means if you do not give it, it will crash. All right. Now there's another attribute here called comic engine, and that's going to be the class that I'm using, the comic module that I'm using in order to get it. Okay? It's going to be held in an attribute, so I don't have to keep it in a scalar somewhere in the package. I just I want to keep it in an attribute. So it's a read-only. It's an object. doesn't matter which object. Moose actually has a type constraint called object. It just has to be a blessed reference. And it's lazy. That means that I want to calculate it whenever it's actually used. I don't want to just calculate it in advance. I want to make sure that it's only created when it's used. And uh, I have a builder for it called underscore build underscore comic, underscore engine, that's, that's the methodology that we have, like underscore build, underscore name of attribute. And I used handles here, which I haven't shown, which handles actually proxies away this method, this fetch method. That means that if the object that will be stored in this attribute has a fetch method, I'm going to have it. And people will be able to call comic cans fetch and reach by proxy the comic engine and that fetch. Is that okay? I see a weird look over there. D would you like me to explain? I can. All right. So you have the comic can, right? That's the main module. And you have the comic under it, like XKCD comic, right? The XKCD comic has a fetch method. Now, I want the user not to do like comic can object, 
go to the comic engine object and then run fetch from that. I don't want them to keep writing to get to the, the actual fetch method. So I'm using handles, which comes in, in Moose attributes, which says this attribute is an object and it has a fetch method. I want to have that method. So he creates a fetch method in comic can, which will actually run the fetch method in that attribute object. Is that okay? All right, cool. I have arguments for it, so if the user wants to say, I'm going to give arguments to the engine itself because XKCD has a, a different feature and I want to throw it in there like async or whatever, um, I can have that. I've set it as an array, array ref and I have like an empty array ref. So it has some kind of array ref value already in, in it. Then I, I write the build method, which is basically self, and then I have a class, which I create like the, the namespace, and then I run new, and I give it the comic engine args. Now this, is, this will always work, because whether the user provided one or not, I provide one that is empty. So basically, if the user provided one, it will give it. If not, it will give it just, just throw an empty list in there. That's okay. Uh, the make immutable, meta make immutable, you don't have to remember that, but when you start using Moose, people will advise you on doing that. It will just make things faster. All right, it's not required though, it's just uh, like namespace auto clean, it's really good. Let's look at how a, uh, a role is defined. So this is uh, how a role is defined. This is the interface that role, the co uh, specific uh, comics have. I use moose role instead of moose in order to say, this is, a this is a bunch of behaviors, but you cannot do a new here. So I use that one, and you can see that I set up a comic URL, which is a required string. This thing says, um, this gives whoever consumes this role another attribute without them defining it. Which means that if I create a comic module and I do with role comic, suddenly I have a, a new attribute called comic URL. And this is like to give the original URL for where the comic is, like the official URL. I just, I needed something, I don't know. Requires here says, if you're going to use me, like this role, you're going to have to have a subroutine. A specific method. You're going to have to have a method called fetch. This is my way of making sure that whoever uses this role has that correct method that is defined as the, our interface. It will crash if I have a new uh, moose object and I use with comic can role comic and I do not provide a fetch method, it will simply crash. This role requires you to have it. All right, moving on. I'll give you an example of a comic object. This is how it looks. We have an XKCD comic, use moose, WWXKCD. It exists, I wrote it, I was bored. Um, I do with comic can roll comic, which gives me two things. First of all, it makes sure, it makes sure that I have a fetch method. So it conforms me to some interface and it gives me the comic URL, okay? And what I do here, I, I haven't showed this, I use the plus here to say, I know I have an attribute here, I know because I got it from the role, and I want to overwrite something in it. I want to just change a specific option in it. So I change the default in it. <laughs> All right? This is the way of, for me to make sure that, for example, if you'll see here that this comic URL is required. That means if I will not override and give it a default and the user will not provide it, it's going to crash. Th this is another way for me to enforce a specific uniform um, interface. No, but requires will, will be okay because there is a default. Okay. All right. This is, like, this is a good way to make sure that if you're writing a system where users add plugins for you, you just give them this role, and you say, just use that one. And then you make sure that they set up different attributes correctly. But if I had done this, I would have then said required uh, that comma zero. What do you mean? Like right here, under default, I would then put required that comma zero. So I'm, in my thought, I thought I had to say, now it's no longer required because I'm giving you a default. No, but what if a user uses it, and they don't want to give it a default because they forgot about it? You want to put it as required to say, I want to make sure you do this. It's got a, it's got a value now. It's got a default because I wrote it and I know what I'm doing. Maybe a different user is new to it. He didn't give it a value. The required will make sure that they do. I do the required here. You can do the required here, but then what if you have a user that doesn't want to add the required? 
Why make a user add the required each time? I just put it in the interface. That's it. All right. Um, there's a fetcher. I'm sorry. There's a fetcher object here, which is basically the object I'm going to use in order to get that, because I'm not going to write a whole fetcher for XKCD again. So I give it a method called build fetcher, and then there's like a new XKCD object. Then I have the sub fetch, which uh, runs the fetcher's fetch. I can handle. I can use handles there too. See, this is the point of the handles. Ma'am, is that is that okay to call people ma'am? I'm sorry. Um, the the do you see here that I have uh, a fetcher attribute, which is, which is an object. And I have to call the fetcher to get there, and then I have to call his fetch. Right? Makes sense. This is, this is why I had handles in the beginning, so I wouldn't have the user do this each time. Get to the attribute, and from there to the method. So I get it, I call it, I return it. That's it. This is the entire program. All right, let's see what else I got, because we're running out of time. This regex works. I tested it. It works on M, Mo, Moo, Mouse, and Moose. Some people use uh, or look at uh, the different modules and they want to know what the difference is. So Moose is the standard one. Mouse is a subset of it, a uh, fairly um, extensive, uh, extensible uh, subset, but a subset. It uses success and it's faster. If you're using Mouse, you should probably use any Moose which says, use mouse unless moose is already loaded. And then you have an application that if you don't use moose specifically anywhere, it will use mouse, which will be faster. But if you have moose somewhere, it will just run on moose, it's already loaded. There's moo. Moo is pure curl completely. It is a subset of moose, and it's really, 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 really fast. Um, mo, it's, it's, but it's a much smaller subset. subset. Take into account, it works a bit differently. Uh, it's compatible. Mo is as little as possible, including the character count. You should look at the source. It's just like a single line of shit. And, um, and um, it, it was, I, I think it was a joke. I don't know. Some people use it. And there's M, which really is as little as possible. I think it has like the package definition. That's it. So it was an example. And there's Humus, which is actually uh, incompatible chickpeas paste. <laughs> All right. So I don't always need a meta class based postmodern introspecting pluggable object system for profile with eternal type constraints and role support and a fluffy pony, if you know what I mean, wink wink. Just kidding. But when I do, I use moose. Thank you. All right. We have one minute, I think. Does anyone know the schedule? Is there like two minutes? Ten minutes. Awesome. All right. Uh, the if you know what I'm talking about, wink, wink, I have no idea what that means. Like, it, it, really, I'm not talking about anything. If anyone thought it was like a reference to something, it isn't. All right, questions. We have time. I can explain the code. I can answer other stuff. I can give you a hummus recipe if you really want one. Shoot. What? Sure. Sure, I can do that. Where would you like me to post the code? On um, XKCD. Where? Just give it to me, I'll copy it. If anyone else wants it, just let me know. If anyone wants, wants to write it, you can write it. That's really cool. There's already a basic framework for that. Any other questions? Anything you're not sure about, anything you're worried about, everything, anything, if you need like, I don't know, uh, help with stuff. Yeah. What's the uh, Meta class. First of all, type constraints. You don't have type constraints. You can do an isn't and provide a subroutine. And that subroutine will be run when it checks for the value. So you can do a subroutine and then check, is it like a digit? If not, I'll die. And do that thing. And that, that's the only type constraint that you have. So the whole type constraint thing, the meta class thing, uh, attribute traits do not exist, which are a really advanced feature. I don't know if you know that one. So there's a bunch of those that don't exist. But it's really, really, really fast. And it's pure pro, so you can fast pack it along with uh, whatever you're using, and that's really useful. And you can embed it in whatever. It's, it's actually relatively small. And uh, it was written by a core developer of Moose. It was written by uh, MST. Next one. Next two, even. Shoot. What's the Ah, shit. Um, <laughs> I think it doesn't need five <laughs> I think it requires. 
What? Yeah, I think it requires like 588 or something, but I think, oh my god, that's like, what are you using? Uh, Red Hat? What? Our production system is 5.8. Right, okay. Look well, mine, mine is Red Hat and Center West, so they use like 5.8. Right, but you have now 6 where they have like 5.10. Oh my god, I think they're like, threw a party for it or something. We kind of want to change. Right, everyone wants to change from Red Hat. We also we started with something else. Anyone else? At some point, probably 5A will be deprecated, I think. It's, it's uh, 5008, so it's just 5008. 5.8, yeah. All right, it's not even 8A. Yeah. Lucky you. Yeah, that's, that's required. That's like the only way to do it. Well, the pearls kept keep getting better, so <laughs> if I could use like the latest, I would. Um, I use, I think, 588 on some production systems, and on others, I have 5142. Debian for the win. Uh, well, Ubuntu, actually. Um, I don't have any specific recommendation other than features that are in Perl. Like, there, there were a lot of fixes in Perl. So, for that reason, you probably want to get a, a better version if you can. If you can, well, it's up to you. Uh, what else? Yeah, that guy. I'm assuming that Moose Closure goes down somehow. So, the rate that it goes down is going to continue. Right, penalty. That's a good question. No one asked it. Except you. Two points for you. You you all guys lose one point. <laughs> the women as well. I just didn't say guys. I'm sorry. You lose a point as well. Both of you. That's the rule. Uh, penalty. Moose has a penalty for uh, compile time. That means when you just run it and it goes into the compile phase of Perl, that compile time is going to set you back on Moose, I'd say about one, well, not even a second. It's, I think, a... Uh, 0 0.7 on my machine, I have like a crappy laptop, so it might be one on a crappier, it might be 0 0.5, it depends on what you're in, um, which is really reduced from where it was. People kept talking about the penalty in Moose, but nowadays it doesn't exist as much as it did before. So if you're writing like a, an application that has to go up and stay up for more than two, three seconds, it's well worth it, I think. Um, and if you want something that's really complicated or at least very satisfying in the environment that you get that's really useful and that's why I have um, this slide because if I want like really good stuff if I want a good ground I use moose Run and Pelting is relatively small I think I think it, it is relatively small and the packet like the meta thing what you do is you call packages meta and from there you call make immutable and you can read more about that in the awesome manuals that Moose has. It has like one of the best documentations I've ever seen. And it explains there. What it does is inline some of the things right into the object that cannot be changed later. That means that once you have the definition for the object, for example, and you want to say, well, I just want to add another attribute now, even after I created the object. You can do that in Moose. But if you inline it, you can't. Usually you don't do this, right? You, you define the shit you want. You know, like, Let's add another attribute while we're running. So it doesn't happen much. And then it becomes much faster. Much faster. That's why it's important to have that line. That's why it's useful to have that line, yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else? Shoot. Any special tools to debug the code or something drawn? As, as far as I can see, there's a lot of dark magic you have happening behind the scenes. Right. Yeah. Well, it's not like dark. I, mean, it, I wouldn't say it's dark magic, but let's say darker corners. And um, they, they write really good code. They write really, really, really good code. Um, I use NYT Prof, develop NYT Prof. Um, I use prints. <laughs> I'm old school like that, like not GDB old school, but just like print shit out all the, everywhere. And I, I found that really, really useful for me. I, don't, I never needed like a serious debugger for it. And I'm pretty sure NYT Prof will help you understand where things go when you need them sometimes. Like if you want to catch performance, it's pretty good. I don't use any special tools. Maybe others do. Sir? Once the object is initialized, ah. once you created a new object, that's it. That's the object. Like you can change the, the values of things, but you can't like you have a name 
and you create a new dog, dog object, and then you say, well, this object is missing something. I'm going to just dynamically add another new attribute definition to it. You can't do that with immutable. Oh. But how often do you do that? It, which is pretty much never. So, so it doesn't trouble you. And they go with subclasses, they go and push another role in, do whatever they want. Anything else I did not cover? or that you were wondering about. Don't feel shy. Um, like I got nothing to do for the next four minutes anyway. Talk about Logable for a second? Yeah, all right, cool. So uh, I wrote this uh, module. Um, I'm going to totally plug the shit out of it. Uh, I, I wrote this module called um, MooseX. Like the MooseX um, namespace has a bunch of cool stuff, really, really cool stuff that you can just push into your uh, code and use them. It's really, 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 really useful. Uh, for example, <coughs> MooseX, <coughs> sorry, MooseX Simple Config, which allows you to, then the, this guy actually finished the talk right down the hall. Um, so you can have, um, for example, a configuration file over there, a YAML configuration file, and then in your class you can do with MooseX Simple Config, and suddenly the attributes that you config are read, are read automatically from this configuration file and put in here automatically. It's incredible. So I wrote something else called uh, MooseX Role Logable. And what it does is give you a logging system really, really uh, simply and easily. And you just do with MooseX Role Logable. And suddenly you can do stuff like set prefix for a certain subroutine as part of an output for a log, log debug, which logs if the debug flag is on. You get the debug flag attribute. Um, you can do clear perfect stuff over there. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, and you get like uh, support for um, syslog, you get support for output to standard error, standard out, to files, to the, like everything you can imagine. Basically because I just hooked it up to um, log dispatchioli, which is a really good module. This is actually you should learn how to use it here. Uh, Ricardo wrote it, so I don't need really to say more. But you can create, you can write logs with it. You can log stuff and log using a debug uh, attribute here and log fatal, which logs and then dies. And when you use MooseX role logable, you just get all of this inside your class automatically. You get a debug flag, like an attribute that you can set, which is a Boolean. You have all these methods. And it sets the ident for syslog, whoever knows that one. It sets it automatically according to your package. So, really cool. Uh, you should use that. That's it. I think maybe one more question if someone has it, and then I'll just let you leave wherever you need to get to. Yes? Do you use MooseXClear? No, I don't. I never use MooseXClear. I think those guys are going to shoot me for saying it. <laughs> I think MooseXClear, if anyone is not familiar with it, it's really, really sugary um, syntax that uses like really advanced Perl stuff. It's, it looks fantastic. I like Perl, Perl like, I like this the way it is right now. And MooseX Declare has too much of a penalty for me. If it didn't have a penalty like the way it does, it had like a serious, serious penalty. Only a compile time, but it's a huge compile time penalty. It's like the, 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 it's like, I don't know. It's like someone bothering you while you work and just move away and takes your, all your time and then like, all right, do whatever you want. You have like one minute. I don't know. I hate I don't like it. <laughs> but if you do, I'll yeah, follow no, it to you. It, yeah. I don't like it I, myself. I could say one thing about that. If you use MooseX Declare, and I know that I can do that. I'll just throw something at you. Method signatures is a good way of doing false arguments with method signatures. It has a So this pulls in a way of doing method yeah. I don't particularly like as much. And you can use method signatures comes with an extra little package that you can tack on there called method signatures modifiers. Yeah, you can if you like the uh, method signatures, you can just use um, there's actually signatures even. There's this which just gives you uh, signatures or I think method signatures. Oh, modifiers. There this you go. This one, you do, you use MooseX Declare, and use method signatures modifiers, and it gives you method 
asshole. All right, thank you, and uh, enjoy.